Hey, Freddy, Freddy, why was Harry Potter such a good computer programmer? Ah, another one of your jokes again. All right, let's have it. Why was Harry Potter a good programmer? Because he spoke Python. <laughs> it's actually pretty good. Welcome to Headless WP Rocks. I'm Kellen, and today we're going to be talking all about doing pagination with WP GraphQL. Quite often on the web, we're working with lists of things, uh, like lists of posts, of pages, of categories, of users, and there's too much data in the database to display all of the records. So instead, we display a small subset of them, and then we need to give our users some way of loading in the next subset uh, of data um, in, in batches. Uh, so it's called pagination. Um, we'll start this video by talking about uh, the ways you can implement pagination and what I think some of the best ways are, like having a load more button the, the user can click and just append more to the list, um, or doing infinite scroll. Uh, and we'll talk about uh, some of the worst, worst ways. I'll make the argument that doing number-based pagination, where you have like page one, two, three, four along a horizontal uh, line and the user has to guess at what might be on page five. I'm gonna make the argument that that's a poor user experience and maybe what to do instead. And after that, we'll go into some coding walkthroughs. I'll show you in a React app how to uh, implement a load more button that fetches the next batch of posts from a WordPress backend and then pops those into the UI. Um, we'll see how to implement infinite scroll and then also how to do uh, previous and next um, links at the bottom of your single blog post pages. Uh, finally, we'll learn the difference between um, offset-based pagination, which is what e WordPress uh, traditionally does, where it uh, um, groups posts by like page one, page two, page three. And then we'll talk about the way WP GraphQL does things, which is different. It's called cursor-based pagination. Uh, so we'll talk through the differences there and how to work with cursor-based pagination as we do our walkthroughs. So let's dive in. All right, so to start, we'll walk through uh, some ways that you could implement pagination and pros and cons and figure out what our favorites are. And then after that, as I mentioned, we'll do the three code walkthroughs and discover the difference between offset and cursor-based pagination, which we'll need to know uh, to work with pagination in WP GraphQL. So in terms of ways to implement uh, pagination, this assumes that you have a list of records and you're considering breaking it up into you know, batches and displaying them um, one by one to the user. Uh, the first option you have is don't. Um, don't do pagination. Uh, and this works great for small lists, even lists that you, know, uh, you might not think of that at first, think of doing this for. Um, I have one example, and that's just my like, personal uh, blog that I did this for. Uh, around the time I was redoing um, my personal site, I saw this tweet by Chris Biscardi, um, the little one-liner, stop using pagination on your blogs. That was it. Uh, and then people chimed into the comments and you know asked all kinds of questions like, what do you mean? Why? Why shouldn't I? And so on. And uh, I got a lot out of this. It kind of changed my mind about um, when pagination is even necessary for something like a blog and even um, getting away from number-based pagination, which we'll talk more about in just a minute. So what I ended up doing uh, for my site is just displaying all of the posts. I only have something like 70, 60 or 70 blog posts, I think. So I just decided like, why not just have all of them on the page? There's no harm in that. I don't have a, you know, footer or call to action or anything at the bottom even that I'm worried about users, you know, scrolling um, through all this to get to. So really it made sense to just display all of them here. Um, one thing that may come to mind is like loading too many images at once. Um, but for this site, because I was using Gatsby and it loads a very low res, you know, placeholder uh, in place for these thumbnails, really I wasn't loading any of these images anyway. They're only loaded when the user scrolls them into view. So for me, I couldn't think of a reason to break this up and to paginate it instead of just listing them all in one shot like this. Um, so that can often be you know, a viable option even for um, decent sized lists. Uh, if you, you know, do it right and the performance is there and the user, you know, doesn't have to um, scroll f for ages, then that might be a good option. 
Uh, if it's not, though, if the list is too large or you, you need to break it up in some way, then you, can, then you should consider one of these other options, I would say. So the first is having a load more button. Um, this one is good if you have things below the list you want the user to be able to get to. So if your site has like a, um, a footer or you know a newsletter sign up or something like that um, further, further down below the list and you want the user be, to be able to get to that, uh, then the load more button is a good one because then the user's in control of, you know, do I want to um, fetch the next, you know, batch of these records and pop them into the UI or don't I? Do I want to scroll past it and get to what's below it? Um, so it's a good option when you want, you know, the user to, to be in control of loading more um, and popping them into the same page. Infinite scroll um, is good when you don't care about the user being able to get to things below the list. You know, if you're happy with the like Twitter style experience where the user can just keep swiping down and you'll just, you know, on the fly, fetch the next batch and pop them into, into the UI for them, uh, then infinite scroll is a really nice modern um, way of doing that. Um, another type of pagination is just previous and next pagination. This assumes you've already drilled down to like a single um, blog post and the user wants to go, you know, to the previous one or the next one. Uh, so that can be, you know, a nice experience. So they don't have to go back to the, you know, the blog listing page. If they're reading like a series of blog posts or something like that, they can just hit next to go to the next one. So that's a good option. Um, and the last one I would recommend avoiding is numbered pagination. Uh, unless it makes sense to do so. Um, so this would be the classic like pagination on Google. So if I hit um, a Google page, I'll just type like the word test right here and then I scroll down, you know, this would be the classic page two, page three and so on. And I used to build sites in this way and like a lot, there are a ton of WordPress, you know, uh, traditional monolithic WordPress sites out there that have numbered pagination like this. Um, but reading through this thread a while back um, that Chris posted um, kind of turned me off to that. And uh, and actually, WP GraphQL has its own forward and backwards pagination um, article right here, which also discourages it. It talks about, there it is, the Google site style pagination and talks about some of the reasons why that is not a great user experience, right? So let's read this really quick. So it says, as a user, what value do page numbers provide in terms of user experience? For real, think about it. If you're on my blog, what does page five mean to you? What does page five mean to you on a Google search result page? Sure, it means you'll get terms 50 through 60 or whatever, but what does it actually mean to you as a user? Um, page five on my blog might be posts from last week if I blog regularly, or page five you know, might be blog posts from 2004. You as the no user have really, really no idea like what is on page five. Um, so I would argue like for that reason, it's not really a great user experience to do numbered pagination. Um, what I think is a better one is to go for the load more pagination or infinite scroll. If you just want the, the user to be able to, you know, load um, even more records on the same list. Otherwise, if you want them to be able to um, skip skip ahead or skip back in time and find posts that are like much older. Um, if you're getting to that point, then why not have some kind of filtering in place so that you, your users can say, hey, I only want blog posts that are from last year or from two years ago or, or you know six months ago or whatever else and just um, refresh your list to show what they're interested in. Because uh, that's a lot more intuitive to the user. You know, if they, if they know, oh, I can load more of the same list I'm looking at or I can filter it to show ones within this date range. You know, then it's very clear um, what they're viewing and what the list represents instead of this arbitrary numbering system we've seen so commonly on the web of just like, here's page six, which is just some older, some older, you know, blog posts and so on. Um, so I'm a fan of like that, that approach, getting away from the numbered pagination here and then going with either load more or infinite scroll, as I, as I said, uh, there are some exceptions, though. So you, doing number and pagination, you might still want to consider it if it makes sense to do so. So going back to Google um, on this search page, for instance, they have, you know, the, the results to my search here. And then at the bottom, some other related searches. So Google, you know, it may be that instead of doing infinite scroll and just popping more into the UI right here, they instead want to stop me and say, hey, if you if, if by now 
you've looked through all these links and haven't found what you want, you may want to try a different search instead and they provide you options. So because, you know, Google actually wants to like stop you from loading more and, and cause you to make another decision, I would argue that, you know, going for this style of pagination is warranted or can be justified for, for something like this. Um, but I would say if you have no reason to kind of stop the user from, from loading more in, then why not just do that instead of, you know, making them click a link here and then doing a whole, you know, reload of the page to show the next list. So now that we've talked through some of the methods that you might want to use for implementing pagination, um, let's go ahead and do some code walkthroughs. Uh, so we'll cover numbers two, three, and four on this list. We'll see how we can implement load more pagination, infinite scroll, and then previous and next pagination. Uh, before we can really dive into coding those up though, we have to do this and understand the difference between offset and cursor-based pagination. Um, so if you uh, come from the WordPress world and you've done uh, pagination on a typical monolithic WordPress site, um, you may be used to doing things like this. Um, so when you run a WP query, uh, you can say, you know, I want posts and um, the posts per page that I want are 10, let's say, and then you provide an offset. So for the very first page um, of your blog, you might say, you know, offset is zero. So that means start from the beginning. But if the user hits, you know, the, uh, a button indicating that they want to load uh, the next set, then what, what you would need to do then is offset um, your query by 10. So that's telling WordPress and ultimately um, my SQL to skip the first 10 posts and then get 10 after that. And then for the next page, you need to skip 20 and then 30 and so on uh, for each of your, your pages. Um, so that's referred to as offset based pagination. And it's how most things in, in WordPress work and a large portion of the web like um, uses offset based pagination. Uh, WP GraphQL doesn't though, um, for, for a couple of reasons. Uh, one is uh, related to performance. So if you're running a WP query like this, um, it actually, uh, this actually has trouble scaling um, the more posts that you have on your site. So if uh, the offset is some high number, if you're offsetting, you know, a hundred or several hundred or whatever else, um, it, when the SQL query runs, uh, it actually has to count all of the records that you're skipping to know when to start you know, fet fetching records. Um, so the more that you're skipping and the more posts you have total on your site, um, the performance gets a, a bit worse uh, as you go. If you don't care about pagination, uh, there is this option. You can pass no found rows true. And that tells WordPress, you know, don't do that offset counting that I talked about to figure out how many um, records there are and then how many were, were found. Uh, you can set that to, to true to skip that and get some performance gains um, from that. Uh, but if you don't pass this in um, and you're providing an offset, then it does the thing I talked about where it counts the records and it will get slower once you have lots of posts and you're skipping um, a lot of them. In WP GraphQL, uh, let's, let's take a look at that now. We'll compare this offset-based approach to cursor-based. So here in the WordPress admin, let's see how we can query for some posts and uh, use cursor-based pagination to see what that looks like. So I'll say um, query get posts initial let's see this is our initial pass at, at doing this and we want posts and at this point you might think um, all right I can you know pop open the parentheses here and maybe do um, posts per page but you'll find out oh that doesn't exist oh what about offset can I tell it how many to skip before you know starting this query no, I can't do that either. Um, what about page? Can I tell it, I'll get page two, page three? Is there a page argument? Again, no, there's not. Instead, what you're left with, other than uh, where, which is used to filter the results, the other four things you're left with are these um, last, after, and then before, first. And this is what um, cursor-based pagination is all about. Uh, so let me get a list displayed first, and then we'll talk about um, cursor-based pagination. So I'll say I want um, the database ID and title uh, for each post. So that looks like this. Um, 
So that's great if you only want you know posts from the beginning of the list. So by default in WordPress, that's just like the most recent blog posts and then the ones after that. What if I want to do some pagination though? If I wanna say, hey, only give me the first couple of posts and then give me the ones after that, how would I go about doing that? Um, so the answer is to use a few of these um, arguments here, these input fields. So what you can do is say, I want the first two posts after and then specify which which post you want after so by default is null so that means start from the beginning uh, so if i run this there it is i'll get the most recent two blog posts and then i'll stop because i said i wanted the first two after that one um, but that begs the question what if i want to get the next two after that how do i paginate and get my next you know data set and how you do that is um, to pass in what's called a cursor here. So to get the cursor for this particular data set, we will use um, this page info. So when you're composing your queries, if you're planning on doing pagination, this is what I would do. So get page info and then find out if this uh, data set has a next page like that and then get to the end cursor for this data set as well. So as soon as you have that, you can fire off this query and then you get you know the same nodes that I saw before, but now I get some more info. So my front end JavaScript app it knows, you know, do we have a next page? Next page? Yes, there's more data you know to get, and I also have the end cursor. So this is just a unique identifier right here that um, represents the very last post in this data set. So that would be this one here, post uh, 58. Um, it's the end cursor that that points to that particular post is right here. So now if I wanted um, the first two after post 58, I'm able to use this cursor. So on my front end JavaScript app, I would take that end cursor and say, all right, now instead of doing first two after the beginning, you know, null, instead I would paste this in. And now if I fire this off, we should expect to get the ones after um, 60 and 58. So let's try it. So there we go. So now I'm uh, getting the next page here of results. So in my case, that's the next two posts like this. Um, and again, has next page has been reset and then end cursor has been reset. So now this end cursor reflects uh, this last one in this data set. So you can continue in this way where you're just swapping out, you know, the um, end cursor right here and then firing off your query again to get the, um, the next, you know, subset of results after the last one. Um, and this works in both directions. You can do forward pagination where you're getting the first two after something. Um, you can even go backwards in time. You can get the last two before and then pass in some cursor um, or even crazy stuff like bi-directional uh, pagination. So this would be cool if you had something like um, posts that represent uh, events, let's say like on a timeline. What you could do is have uh, like the current date in the center and allow the user to swipe both ways. So that means if the user swipes, you know, backwards, um, you would you would uh, tell GraphQL, okay, now give me the um, last ten posts before the current date, and keep doing that and keep passing in, you know, the uh, the cursor to get the ones, you know, further and further in the past to load, you know, um, past events. Otherwise, if the user swipes the other way, then you can tell where uh, WP GraphQL to get the first ten after and then pass in the cursors um, each time, each time you want to grab more events. So you can do cool stuff like that uh, with off with uh, cursor based pagination, where you can um, paginate both forwards and backwards. And it also has some performance gains as well. So instead of doing the um, counting of records that I mentioned that offset based um, pagination does, instead what cursor based pagination does is it uses this unique um, identifier that you pass in and it locates that exact record in the database and then from there uh, it just counts forward five or ten or however you ask ask for or counts backwards five or ten so instead of counting all those records that ever you know came before it it skips all that work and just starts counting you know um before or after uh the one that you've specified um so it's more performant and uh you can also do things like backwards pagination, as I mentioned, um, which is why it's used for, for WP GraphQL. So that's why there's that, uh, that difference there. Um, so for our app that we're going to build, um, what we're going to use for the demo, instead of hard coding these like that, uh, ours will look like this. So let me wipe out our old query and we'll see what 
our final one looks like. So we're going to use this in our app, get posts, and then we're accepting uh, some input arguments. So you passed first, which is an integer, and then after, which is a string. And remember, again, that's that um, end cursor right here. And then based on those arguments, it reruns you know, this um, post query and then passes in the arguments you specified to get you know, the next subset of results. So on our front end app, what, what we can do is pass in you know, the first um, five, and we'll say uh, after null to start in the beginning, you know, so that would give us like the first, um, the first data set like that. And then if the user uh, hits like the load more button, what our app will do is grab the end cursor and it'll fire this off again, but it'll pass in different query variables. It'll pass in five and then this end cursor here to get the next set of results. All right, so now that we have an understanding uh, of the difference between offset pagination and cursor-based pagination, I think we're ready to go ahead and make use of this in a front-end uh, JavaScript app. So I have this Next.js app running here called Pagination Station, and um, we're gonna uh, code up a load more example where the user clicks a load more button, an infinite scroll example, and then do um, previous and next links uh, for our single blog post so the user can go forward or backward, you know, by one post as well. So we'll start with our load more example. So I'll click through there and you can see I just have a placeholder at this point. So we'll be working out of um, this project folder right here, pagination station, uh, but I have a finished version of it over here and we'll copy and paste some things back and forth. Um, so to start, let's look at what we have for pages here. So in this next JS yes app, um, I have pages and then load more and on this page, it calls one uh, component that we're concerned with, and that's load more list. And load more list lives right here. Um, so at the moment, it's um, blank, but we'll see how uh, we need to build out this component to um, arrive at our load more paginated list. Let's head over to our finished project, and we'll find this component right here, load more list. So we'll be copying and pasting things back and forth, and then talking through it um, each step of the way. So first, um, at the top, let's grab a few imports that we'll need, as well as this uh, GraphQL query. So this we've seen once before. Um, this was the uh, query that we popped into the graphical instance in the WordPress admin that accepts two arguments, first and after, and then fires off that um, request to grab posts. All right, um, following that, so I have this constant defined right here outside of the component for a batch size. And this is like how many posts we want to grab at each time. So we're saying we want to grab um, posts in sets of 10 right now. So page one would be 10. When these are hits load more, then it would be uh, 10 more. So that's what that number is all about. And then after that, we um, make use of our query and uh, use Apollo client. So I'll copy this block and we'll talk through that. So Apollo client um, comes with this use query hook. You can see where that's coming from here. And you pass into it the query that you'd like to run. In our case, that's this get post that we've defined there. And they pass through any variables. So you can see when um, the component first loads up, we're saying, give me the first 10, since that's our batch size, after null, meaning start from the beginning. Um, and then uh, we'll fire this off again, um, as the user, each time the user clicks the load more button. Um, all right. After that, uh, we have just a few conditionals to account for all possible states. Um, cause when this component first loads up, it won't have, um, this data, it'll need to fetch it on the client. So loading will, um, will be true at that point and it'll, it'll be, the request will be in flight. Um, we also need to account for any errors and so on. So I just have a few conditionals here. So if we have an error, we're displaying a message. Um, if we have no have no data and we're loading, so that means it's like the um, initial you know uh, load that this component has just mounted for the first time, and we're getting our data for the first time. In that case, we'll just display loading. Um, and then if we uh, have no posts, so if we're no longer loading and the um, request has finished, but we don't have any posts 
they were displaying no posts have yet been published. So if we make it past all these checks, then we know um, we're not loading uh, and we actually you know, have data. Um, and not only that, but our posts array is not blank. We have posts to be displayed. So then you know, we know we can proceed and display a list. So a few variables that get set next like that. Um, so this one I'm just doing a little data massaging. So I'm saying out of the data that Apollo gave us back, drill down to posts and then edges and map over those and just pull out um, each of the nodes. Uh, so these you know, levels of nesting come from our query. So this would be like the data Apollo client um, comes back with. And then under that we have uh, posts and then under that edges and under that each, each individual node. That's where the data posts, edges, and then node uh, comes from. So now that we've pulled those out, we have a nice um, succinct you know, variable to work with. Then I also have this uh, line that checks to see if we have any more posts um, to load. If we do, then we can continue showing our load more button, but if there are no more posts, then it doesn't make sense to do that anymore. So we'll need to do something, something else. All right, and after that, we're ready to actually um, display our list of posts. So that looks something like this. Let's grab some of this. Let's see, so we'll comment that out for now and just talk through the top portion. <clears throat> so what we're gonna say is um, the posts right here we're going to uh, map over those inside of a UL tag. And then for each post, uh, we're pulling out some data, database ID, title, and then the slug. And uh, for each of those, we're just displaying a list item on the list. So I just have some you know, inline styles there to make it look halfway decent for the demo here. And then inside of that, um, we're just using uh, the Next.js link component and pointing it to slash blog slash whatever the slug is. Uh, for this blog post, and then displaying um, the title of the blog post there, so the user can you know find the post they're interested in on the link or on the list, and then uh, click that link to shoot over to um, that blog's page, that blog post's page. All right, so all that looks good, um, but without this commented out section, the user can never load any more. Um, so that's what we need to do next. Uh, let's give this a save though, just as is, and leave this commented out and see what we have in a browser. Yeah, so there we go. Um, our load more example is working. If I um, re reload, we should be able to see the word loading briefly right there. And then uh, very quickly, the initial request for our first batch of 10 completes, and that's displayed here on the list. In each of these, if I hover, you can see is a link that goes to um, that single page. So this is looking great. Um, and now we're ready to move on to the next part, which is adding a load more button, which when clicked, as we said, would fetch the next 10 and then append it to the list. So let's see how we can do that. So what we'll do is um, add, add in this code. So we'll say, if we have more posts, then what we're going to do is display um, this form with a button inside that says load more. Um, if we're currently uh, loading, the user has already clicked this button, then what we're going to do is set disabled to true and then also and set the button text to just loading dot dot dot. Um, otherwise, if we're not loading, then uh, it will not be disabled and the button will say load more. So when this button is clicked, um, the form will be submitted and you can see here's the on submit handler right here. So we're calling fetch more and this is a function that Apollo client gives us. <clears throat> so you can see here when we um, call use query, fetch more uh, is provided to us and we're choosing to call that and pass in variables that differ compared to those we fired off initially. So initially we said we want the first 10 after null, but this time um, when we call fetch more, then we're passing in um, a different variable for the after. Uh, we're saying after data, posts, page info, and then end cursor. So that comes from our data here. So remember that's the one we saw in the WordPress admin where 
Um, if you go drill down to posts, page info, and then end cursor, that's that unique identifier. So in our case, it would represent this post, the very last post in the data set. And we're telling Apollo Client, get the next 10 after the one with this particular cursor right here. Um, so that's why we're passing this, this variable through right there. So then each time the user clicks the button and this on submit runs, fetch more will run and it'll pass in whatever the current end cursor is um, for the, you know, based on the previous batch. All right, um, but that form we're only displaying if we actually have more posts, right? If we've loaded all of the posts in the WordPress admin, there actually are no more to fetch. Um, we can handle that as well. So we have our, our else right here and it just says all posts loaded. So once we get to the end, instead of showing our load more button, we show all posts loaded. So let me give that a save and let's see how it looks. All right, so here's load more. I'm gonna go ahead and um, refresh things. So I'll reload, they're loading. Here's our initial list of 10 here. So the user can scroll the list and if they decide, hmm, I haven't found what I want, I don't wanna go you know, a bit older, I wanna see posts older, uh, they can click load more. You can see momentarily it uh, gets disabled and displays loading and then more posts um, get added to the list. All right, if they, they want to do it again, let's say load more, more posts, and now you can see all posts loaded. So I've actually loaded in all of the posts from my WordPress backend down to uh, the very first one, which is hello world. So you might have sensed that there's a little bit of magic going on here, um, where Apollo client like has this initial list, and then when you call fetch more, and it has this new batch list, somehow it knows how to you know add those lists together and then uh, store those um, in in memory, and that becomes you know your uh, your full list that you're working with. Um, in Apollo client uh, version two, you used to have to do that kind of appending yourself. Uh, so when you called fetch more uh, like this, you would have to take, you know, the results currently um, in the Apollo cache and those that uh, you just got back for your next page and append, you know, one to the other and then save that in Apollo, um, Apollo's cache as, you know, the full list. So you had to kind of like manage that yourself. Uh, in Apollo client three though, um, some of that complexity has gone away, thankfully. Um, so I'll show you how to tell Apollo um, to uh, append the list together because uh, different forms of um, cursor-based pagination do things a bit differently. So WP GraphQL follows a particular um, GraphQL implementation called the relay specification. Uh, so what you can do is wherever you set up Apollo, so for me that's like inside of services and this Apollo JS file, what you can do is um, add some type policies. So this is how kind of how that magic happens. So you can see I'm setting up a new Apollo client. I'm telling it, you know, what the URI is and passing it the um, the GraphQL you know, endpoint to my local environment, and then passing in cache right here. And this cache comes from um, line four here, where I'm instantiating this in-memory cache that comes from Apollo client, and then I'm defining these type policies. So um, Apollo has documentation on this. So you can, you know, just Google type policies and read all about it. But uh, in a nutshell, this is what you do. You say um, type policies, query fields, and then for the type of content um, that you're querying. So for us, that would be uh, posts. You know, those are the type of object. You pull relay style pagination from Apollo client utilities like that. And um, you call that function and uh, send its result in as the value for posts. So because we know uh, our WordPress backend is using WP GraphQL and it uses the relay spec, as I said, we can tell Apollo, hey, when you do um, pagination and you're adding you know, one list, um, the, the new list to the previous list, we use the Apollo spec. So just append the lists um, in, that, in that way using cursor-based pagination and uh, passing this function tells Apollo to do that. So you would need to do this for other types of lists, like if you um, wanted to do pagination for uh, pages in your app, you need to do pages. If you have some custom post type, you know, like projects or whatever, you need to do, to do that for the others as well. So next, um, we'll see how we can do infinite scroll. So then instead of the user having to click any button, we just detect when they're near um, the bottom of the screen and load more automatically for them.
So to get started with infinite scroll, um, let's open up the proper component here. So this will be very reminiscent of load more. So we'll look under pages in our Next.js app and find the infinite scroll page. And you can see here, there's nothing to it really. It just has a heading, infinite scroll example, and then this infinite scroll list component. So if I head back to my root directory and then I head to the infinite scroll example page and it sends me there, you can see it just has this placeholder infinite scroll list goes here. And that's coming from this infinite scroll list component that looks like that. So again, we'll repeat the process where we'll um, copy and paste things over from our finished um, project and then see how it looks. All right, so here's infinite scroll list. All right, so just like last time, we'll grab um, some of this to start, just the top section, how about? And we'll talk through things. All right, so, um, so we're getting a few dependencies that we had before, um, like use query and GQL from Apollo. Um, we're getting link from next link, and now we have a new one here. Um, so for this example, I'm using this NPM package, uh, React Infinite Scroll component here. Um, this is going to use the browser's um, intersection observer API to detect when the user is close to the bottom of the screen and then just trigger um, that fetch more function that we saw. It'll just trigger that to, to fire and load more posts automatically. Um, so we'll pull out this infinite scroll um, component that that package provides. All right, um, this get post query is unchanged compared to our uh, load more example. This is exactly the same. Batch size, still 10, exactly the same. And let me copy the next few items here. All right, um, again, this is still exactly the same here. We're using that same query, doing first 10 after null. And this time uh, we've pulled out fetch more posts into um, its own function here, rather than it being in line before we had it um, inside of uh, inside of the form on submit handler. That's where we were calling it. In this example though, we've just um, pulled out our, our fetch more uh, function into its own function declaration like that. And we have all of our same checks for rendering uh, different content depending on you know different states that we may be in right here. After that, uh, we have the exact same posts and have more posts lines that we did in the load more example. And then after that, again, we can um, start rendering our list. So this will look a bit different. We start with the same UL, but then inside of that, you can see we're using this um, infinite scroll library to help us out. So let's copy this over. And we'll talk through things. All right, so what are we doing here? So we're opening up our list, because at this point, again, since we've made it through uh, these conditionals, we know um, we are, we're not loading, and we even um, have data to be displayed. Um, so we know we have posts to work with. So at this point, we're uh, displaying our UL list, and then we're using this um, infinite scroll library, and it, um, <clears throat> if you read its documentation, it just has a few props that it accepts. Um, so one is data length. This is how many records um, that you've fetched so far. So for us, that would be like posts dot length. So the number of posts that there are, that's the data length. Um, and then you pass in whatever function you'd like to be called um, to load the next you know page. So for us, we pass this fetch more posts. Um, so this one just calls you know Apollo clients fetch more function again, um, but it passes a different variable. So just like last time, we're just grabbing the end cursor right there and telling it to grab the next page um, with that end cursor. One thing I'll mention, um, I didn't mention in the load more example, and that is why we have this line, notify on network status change true. Um, reading through the Apollo client docs, uh, I've found when doing pagination on my projects that it's necessary to set this to true in order for um, loading uh, to work when using fetch more. So if you if you don't pass this in, that means uh, loading will be true when the page initially loads and it's running the query for the very first time. But then 
every time you're running uh, fetch more, loading actually won't be updated. Loading will just stay false, um, which is kind of counterintuitive. So anyways, uh, just a little gotcha there. So with Apollo, Apollo Client version 3, if you pass notify on network stash change true, then uh, that will um, cause things to re-render every time there's a uh, network status change and um, it'll reset the variables here. So including loading. So every time you fetch more, if it's loading versus it's finished uh, the request, you'll actually get those updates coming through. Um, so that's why you know this line exists here. All right, so back to our infinite scroll component. So we said we're passing the list of records that currently exist. We're providing the function that it should call whenever it needs to grab the next uh, batch. And then for the has more prop, um, we're passing in a Boolean, you know, whether or not more posts exists. So for us, we can use the same have more posts uh, variable that we set. Um, you also pass in what component you'd like to render um, while you know, more, more posts are being loaded in. So this could be anything you could have like a skeleton screen, um, stuff. So for us, we're keeping it very, um, low tech, you know, very unimpressive here and just saying, um, loading. And then for an end message, uh, this is what the component displays when there are no posts to be loaded. Um, so in our load more example, we did that ourselves. We just checked, you know, is that true? If so, show the form, otherwise show this. Um, but this component uh, handles that for you. It, it just detects, you know, if there, um, if has more is false and there, there's nothing else to fetch, then it'll just display whatever you pass in here. So we're um, choosing to use that prop and just saying, show check mark all posts loaded if there are none more. So what you can do is just wrap um, your whole list that you'd like to display. You can wrap in this infinite scroll component and inside of that, this is exactly the same. All of this is exactly the same as uh, what we saw in the load more list. We're just mapping over our posts and for each one showing a list item, you know, just with some um, styles and then a uh, link so the user can click through and go to that one. So that's all there is to it. Um, this NPM package does a lot of the heavy lifting as you can see. So I'll give you that, that a save and we'll take a look at the browser. <clears throat> All right, so infinite scroll example seems to be working. Um, so let's see, so I'll reload. We should see loading very briefly and then our initial set of 10 will load like that, right? And then as I scroll, if I do it quick enough, we'll see uh, the loading word at, at the bottom. So, so there it is, you're loading briefly. And if you scroll quick enough, yeah, see, all posts are have already been loaded, so we um, weren't quite quick enough. So this has been fully implemented now. Um, our batch size, like to get a few, get it a few more, you know, loads going on. We could set it to something lower, like th only three posts at a time, maybe. And if you'd like, you can flip over the network tab and see these requests being fired off. So we'll filter for only the GraphQL ones, and then when we re reload the page. You can actually see, so here's the first request, you know, for the first um, set of three, like that. And then as I scroll down, you can see additional GraphQL requests being fired off. And each one of these is passing um, something different for the after end cursor right there. So the first one would have been null. And then every set after that would just be, you know, wherever we left off, basically the cursor of the previous set. So as I keep scrolling down, um, I keep seeing, you know, loading momentarily and more requests are fired off until finally all posts have been loaded on the current page. Um, so that's it for implementing uh, a list with infinite scroll. And the last one we're going to cover is how to implement um, next and previous links on your single blog post pages. So let's head back to the root um, of our project here of pagination station and then I'll click on this first blog post to be sent there all right there we go so in our project we'll look inside of pages inside of blog and then I have slug.js right here um, so I'm using a few of uh, next.js's um, functions that it provides for 
um, building out all of my blog pages using uh, this route. So slash blog slash whatever the slug is. So here's how I'm doing that. Just um, I'm using the get static paths function. Uh, it gets exported here and I'm using this um, get post slugs function, which just gets the slugs for all posts um, in our WordPress backend. I'm mapping over those to create this um, this array of paths, each one with this like params object inside with the slug inside of it, and ultimately um, returning that. Uh, so this tells Next.js you know what to um, what pages to use to build out these dynamic routes, right there. So that's where it's getting those slugs from. And then we have to go one step further and tell it what props to pass in. So that's where this comes in. So I'm exporting this. Uh, get static props function. So it receives um, this context uh, variable. And then from there, I can drill down to params.slug to figure out what page um, is this. And it can run a query. So I've defined a GraphQL query here. So you can see that the slug gets passed into it. And then we're saying, um, you know, get the slug with this, or get the post with this particular slug. And then here's the data I want about it. Database ID, blah, blah, blah. Uh, so some of this stuff, like these fields, um, WP GraphQL ships with out of the box, um, but a few of these we've added. So previous post and next post, um, you can't actually query for these normally um, on a post. Uh, I have modified the GraphQL schema to add those. Um, so we'll see how I, how I did that in just a second. Um, so anyways, after that gets, gets run, this, this query, and that ultimately gets returned from this get static props function. Um, and we have a props object where we're passing in, you know, the results that came back. So that ultimately um, gets passed into our post function right here. So to summarize, if the route is like this, if it's slash blog slash hello world, our get static props will, you know, run a query to get um, the post by this slug hello world, and then it will get all the data about it that our page needs. Um, so we're pulling it, that data out. We're saying we want the title, content, and then our previous um, and next pages, and then displaying this. So right now we just have this placeholder, previous and next links go here, um, but we'll replace that in just a minute. All right, before we go there, um, I want to talk about how we've modified the GraphQL schema, though, because I mentioned um, that typically you can't uh, query for the previous and next posts right on a post node like this. So let's see the um, the uh, slight amount of PHP that we need to implement to get that working. So now I've pulled up uh, one of the PHP files in my WordPress backend, and this is where that uh, custom code lives. So I have this um, pagination fields class. I'm instantiating it and then calling the uh, register hooks method on it, which um, adds this action. So when GraphQL register types gets fired, I'm hooking into that and calling my register post fields method right here. And you can see what it's doing. It's calling um, WP GraphQL's register GraphQL fields function and saying um, on the post type in the GraphQL schema, I want to add some fields and here they are. It's um, providing a, an array of field definitions. So you can see I have one for previous post right here. Um, so the type of data returns is a post, description is previous post, and then here's the resolver that tells it where to get that data. So if it's a um, hierarchical uh, post type, it does one thing, it gets the previous um, page ID, and I have some other helper uh, methods here you know, for, um, for getting the data from the proper place. If it's hierarchical, so it does one thing if, if it is. Otherwise, if it's not a hierarchical post type, um, like our posts one is, then this block of code uh, will run. It will um, get the post and then set the set up the global post object to that post we're interested in, and then it'll um, get the previous post. And ultimately, you know, if we were able to find a previous post, it'll return that post object. Otherwise, if there isn't one, like maybe it's the oldest post that there is, so there is no previous one. In that case, it uh, returns null. And then the next one is really just kind of a mirror image of, of uh, the previous one, except we've just swapped out a few of these terms. So instead of, you know, get previous page ID, it's get next. And uh, instead of this, get previous post, 
it's get next post instead. Um, but other than those slight differences, like that would be identical right there. Um, so that's how we've modified the GraphQL schema to allow us to query for previous post and next post. Um, so let's head over to the WordPress admin and we'll see how we can use this. Yeah, so here in the WordPress admin, um, I have this get post query here that we can use. So let's move that to the top and I'll replace our old one. So there we go. So get post, uh, we're passing in a particular ID um, that we're interested in and then we're getting some data back um, about that post. And actually to make it fit our front end project, uh, why don't we use this query exactly um, that we're, we're running right here. So get post and then we're passing in the slug. Let's do this instead. Yeah, like that. And then for our variables, we'll need to provide a slug. So we'll, we know that hello world is the slug for one of them. So we'll go ahead and pass that in when we run our query. So let's give it a try. Okay, uh, yeah, I think we're successful then. So previous post is null, and that's what we'd expect since this is actually the oldest post. But then for next post, um, we are able to get um, the title and slug. So this is awesome. Um, we're able to uh, use this data then in our front end app to display those previous and next links. So let's pause for a minute and think about like why does WP GraphQL not provide this? Why did I need some custom code to implement that? Um, and that's because um, right now, and that's because previous and next posts can mean different things to different people or into different projects. So it hasn't been implemented just yet. So one example would be like quite often you want the previous and next links to be based on the published date. So if the user hits next, it would go to like the next one that was published, but you might not always want that. Like what if you are in a category archive? You know, in that case, you might want to make it so that if the user hits next, it goes to the next post in that category that you're in, right? Or the same would go for like an author, um, an author archive page where you're going to the next post that that particular author wrote and so on. So um, next and previous sometimes mean different things in different contexts. So um, so for that reason, WP GraphQL hasn't implemented this um, just yet. Um, but as you've seen, you can add your own fields with not too much effort. You just have to define you know what object you want your um, custom fields on, and then what uh, the resolver should do, where it where it should you know get that next page from, and um, provide the data. So that's why it was necessary to do that you know bit of PHP to add um, these fields here. All right, so. Yeah, because this is working, we're able to get our previous and next links. I think we're ready to go. Um, so we can head back to our front end app and implement the next, the previous and next links. All right, so let's reset ourselves. So here we are on our post component and we're gonna actually make use of previous and next now. So in our finished product, uh, if we go to blog and then to slug right here, um, again, we'll copy and paste things back and forth and talk through each step of the way. All right, so here we're saying after we've displayed um, the title and then uh, the content for the post, then in this footer section, that's where we're gonna display our um, previous and next post. So let's start with previous. How about I'll copy this section and we'll talk through that. So instead of the, our placeholder, I'll paste this in. <clears throat> so what are, we, what are we actually doing here? What we're doing is I was saying, um, if a previous post exists, because remember it can return null sometimes if there is no previous post, but here we're saying if it um, if it does exist, then display this. So we're showing uh, displaying this div just with some inline styles. Um, we're using uh, the next link component and saying you know it should go to slash blog slash whatever the slug is for that you know previous um, post, and then displaying you know a little emoji with the title. Right. Otherwise, uh, if we have no previous post, then we're um, rendering null right there. So that just won't appear. Cool. So there we go. So I have a title, I have content, and then I do have my previous link. Uh, and our next link will be, again, very reminiscent of the previous one. So I'll copy that next section. So right after the previous link, um, we'll paste in next. So this one is very similar. It's just saying, do we have a next post? If so, here's a div just with some inline styles on it. Here's a link that points to it, and then it says, wherever the title is, 
and then with an emoji po pointing the other way this time. So if I give that a save, there we go. Um, so we now have on our single blog post pages, we have our previous and next links. So I should be able to, you know, keep clicking um, on these to head to the next one. Click, click, keep clicking that, keep clicking that, or head back, you know, in the, the other direction. So with that, uh, that wraps up our pagination video. Um, we talked at the beginning about ways to implement pagination and how, you know, in my opinion, uh, doing the load more button or infinite scroll um, are, you know, some of the best, like most modern uh, approaches and most user friendly approaches. And that um, if you need the user to drill down to specific, you know, date ranges in the past or whatever, by that point, you might as well uh, just implement like some filtering controls so they can find what they need. And uh, I also talked about how you know, numbered, the classic numbered pagination um, is not a great user experience just because they have no idea what page five or page seven even represents. Um, so, you know, maybe uh, think twice before implementing that, um, unless it makes sense to do so. Like we said, if the, you want the user to see a subset of results and then be prompted with some other action, uh, like we saw in Google, where it's asking them to change their search query before continuing on. So if you have some use case where it makes sense, you know, then maybe go for the numbered approach. But otherwise, um, please, you know, consider like one of the other approaches. Um, and then after that, we dove into the code and we saw a few examples. So how to implement the load more button um, and how to do uh, infinite scroll. And then on our single blog post pages, we saw how to do the uh, previous and next links. So I hope that was hugely helpful and uh, you benefit from you know, that knowledge on your headless WordPress projects. Thank you so much for watching and I will catch you in the next video. Did you like that? Go ahead and push that like button. Subscribe.